Welcome back to the Mac Tech Tech. Today we have another pre-con upgrade guide for you featuring Tricky Terrain. So this is a Simic pre-con from uh, Modern Horizons 3. It is helmed by Omo, Queen of Vesuva. So what does Omo do? Well, they primarily pass out these things called everything counters. Uh, the counters don't do anything on their own. They only are active kind of when she's in the field. But she makes it so whatever creatures these everything counters are on are every type of creature, and any lands they are on are every type of land. So this is definitely a lands matters deck. Uh, we're going to be ramping kind of hard, and uh, just kind of trying to outvalue our opponent. Right, we're playing bigger spells faster. Now, as with every pre-con upgrade guide, we are going to swap out 10 cards, taking 10 cards out that didn't quite make that cut, adding in 10 cards that I feel had a little bit more synergy for us. Uh, we're not going to touch the land base, uh, just because it's not very interesting. With this being a land matters deck, though, I am going to go over some lands you could add in, uh, specifically in the honorable mention section, so stay tuned. So, what cards didn't make that cut? We're starting off with an aggressive Biomancy. So this is a double X Simic spell. You're going to create X tokens that are copies of a target creature you control. Except whenever they enter the battlefield, they are going to fight another creature. So this is actually potentially like a nice kind of like big board wipe. We do have a couple like big green stompy boys in the deck. Uh, but I do feel like it's more of a lands matter stack and less of a look how big and stompy I am kind of deck. Uh, so for that reason, I cut it. If you wanted to lean more heavily into big Simic Stummy Boys, definitely keep it. Just not the direction I'm taking this. Chromatic Lantern follows that up. Uh, so it is a three mana rock, which we already know I don't like. It does make us your lands can tap for any color, which is nice, but this is a two color deck, so you really don't need that much color fixing, to be honest. It also taps for, you know, any color you want as well, which is nice, but again, not necessary. Desert Warfare follows up that lantern. Uh, so this is a four cost enchantment. Whenever you sacrifice a desert or a desert is put into your graveyard uh, from your hand or library, you get to cheat it back at the beginning of combat on your turn, if you control five or more deserts, you get to create that many sand warriors and they gain haste. Good card, right? Uh, deserts are an okay land type. I don't really feel like we're using the everything counters to generate more, right? It obviously works in this deck. I'm personally going to take it out, though, and put it into my Desert deck from uh, Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Um, you know, let me know if you think I'm making a mistake here, though. Is Desert Warfare good just for, like, keeping your board full? Following that up, we have Drown in Dreams, so... It is potentially really good card draw for us, right? We are kind of outpacing our opponents in that sense. Uh, we also do have the potential to mill somebody out, depending on how much, you know, mana we're generating, you know, and how quickly we're doing it. Uh, our commander being on the field is definitely key to this strategy, so the fact that it, it lets us choose both modes as long as we have it out, you know, I get it. But, I think we have more consistent, repeatable card draw on the deck, so we're really playing this more so for the mill effect than anything. Um, and I, I don't think we need it, so we're gonna we're gonna take it out. Jyoti Moag. I'm gonna say it's pronounced Moag Ancient. Uh, so a four cost two four. Whenever it enters, you get to create a green forest dryad, which is cool. Begin coming your turn. Your land creatures get plus X plus X, where X is you know Jyoti's power. Honestly, slow. Right, four mana gets you two bodies, one of which is mana, but you can't actually tap that land for mana right away because it's also a creature and it's summoning sick. Uh, so he had to go. Nisa, Steward of Elements. Uh, so this is an X cost Planeswalker. They could scry you, they could cheat things off the top based on their loyalty. 
and they get untapped lands, um, all of which are kind of fine. Uh, I'm going to end up putting this copy into my Elven Scry deck from back in Lord of the Rings, uh, just because of that repeatable scry. The fact that, like, you can get a land or a creature off the top based on how much you paid for it is kind of cool. But again, I just, I feel like we have better ways of generating more lands more quickly than having it on a Planeswalker. Oblivion Stone is going to follow up that Planeswalker. So for three mana, it's an artifact you could pay four and tap it to put Fate Counter on something, and then you could pay five and sacrifice it to destroy everything that doesn't have a Fate Counter. Uh, definitely like a decent board wipe. Um, if you have eight mana, you could just sack it right away and wipe the board. But, eh, eh. Pong of Five follows it up. It is one of our sources of single target removal, which is less powerful, you know, in Commander in general. Uh, I feel like we have a ton of other ways to remove single targets. Uh, so I'm not really all that sad about losing Pong of Five. It was definitely one of those, like, kind of last second, like, well, I need, I need another card. Um, so Pong of Five is out. The Seder Wayfinder. Two cost, one one, whenever enters the battlefield, you can look at the top four, technically revealing them. Put a land from among them into your hand, the rest into the grave. Um, not great, in my opinion. If we were playing, you know, green-black, you know, where we're doing a little bit more graveyard shenaniganery, maybe they get to stay. Um, and we do have 44 lands in the deck. So while it's not, you know, a 50-50 split where we're very likely to hit, you know, we are still above average. But I feel like we could do more uh, for less than Seder Wayfinder. And last up is Treasure Cruise. So Treasure Cruise is an 8-cost Delve card that lets you draw 3 cards. It's definitely good. It's stronger late game once you have cards in the grave. A little weaker earlier on. Um, but we have tons of card draw. Ahmad, I don't feel like we're missing out by not having Treasure Cruise. So, what are we adding in to replace these cards? Well, we're going to start off with Exploration. So, Exploration is a mono green enchantment, literally costs one green, just lets us play extra lands, right? Uh, this is a lands matter deck, we're going to get ahead of our opponents really quickly, we have plenty of card draw, even though we've cut a few pieces of it to kind of keep our hand full and keep those lands coming. Following it up, we have Helm of the Host. So, our commander is pictured wearing it, but then it wasn't included in the deck. Um, so, this is going to soup up how quickly we're getting out these everything counters. You know, it also makes it so it's a little harder to remove the commander from our field. There's a couple other creatures that obviously could go equipped to and, like, give us some pretty decent value. Uh, but for those of you who aren't familiar with it, it is a four-cost equipment. costs five to equip, so a little expensive but we have plenty of extra mana in this deck. Uh, and at the beginning of combat in your turn, you're going to create a copy of the equipped creature, and the copy isn't legendary if the original was. We're also adding in Crop Rotation. So Crop Rotation is a single green for an instant. We're going to sacrifice a land, look for a different land, put it onto the battlefield. Uh, we don't have a ton of effects like this. This isn't really a land sacrifice deck. Um, but it's really important because it lets us grab any land and not just like a basic. Orchdruid's Charm is three green mana. It's also being added in here. It has a couple different effects. The one we really care about is the first one, but it's a little versatile, so I do like it for that. So we look for a creature or land, reveal it and put it onto the battlefield tapped if it's a land, and if not, it's just going to go to our hand. So nice little tutor, they're going for like eight, nine bucks right now. So like, pretty decently priced for what we're getting. Moving out of instants and into sorceries, we are running some Tempt with Discovery. So for four mana, we are going to look for any land in our deck and just go ahead and like, slap onto the battlefield tapped, already pretty good. And we're going to tempt each of our opponents to do the same. For each opponent that follows suit and also grabs a land, we're going to grab another land. 
So I think Temple of the Discovery in any kind of Lands Matter deck is pretty solid. They're fairly budget, they're like around two bucks. Uh, but we're gonna get all of our important lands out really quickly. And that's gonna just let us really get ahead, especially with some of the powerful lands that are already in the deck, as well as some of the powerful lands we could add ourselves. Open the Way follows that up. Uh, so this is another X spell. X cannot be greater than the number of players in the game. So at most, in a standard game of Commander, we're gonna get four lands out of this. Uh, but we're gonna reveal from the top until we hit four lands. We're gonna put those lands all onto the battlefield tapped and everything else is gonna get kind of shuffled and put in the bottom. Uh, this is just a really easy way for us early on to kind of like really get ahead. Also, we're thinning out the deck, you know, we're, we're getting through things. And then there were four, right? We're down to four creatures to add. Starting off with the Oracle of Moldaya. So four mana, two, two. We get to play an extra land on each turn. We love this. We get to place the top card of our library revealed. We are giving away some information, uh, but the fact that we're going to be able to play lands off the top, you know, I think makes up for it. Especially with the fact that there are 44 in this deck. We're also running Azusa, Lost But Seeking, which lets us play two extra lands on every turn. So, you know, a few of these guys out, and we're, like, very just quickly slamming lands out. You know, we're playing big spells. We're kind of running away with the game. Aven Courier. This is actually an interesting tech, in my opinion. Uh, so it's a two-cost, 1-1 one, one Flying Bird Advisor. Whenever it attacks, you choose a counter that's on a permanent you control, and you put a counter of that kind on a target permanent you control if it doesn't have that kind of counter already. So this is honestly just like a really good way of getting extra everything counters. They are a flying 1-1, one, one, so they do have some evasion. And they curve out nicely with our commander, right? We play them on turn two, the commander on turn three. When the commander enters, they pass out some everything counters. We attack with the Aven Courier. We pass out some extra everything counters to other targets. And last but not least, this is kind of an expensive one, but we are in a premium set here, so I feel like it's a little justified. AC Tyrant of Geyer Street. So this is a six cost, five, five. We get to play extra lands. And whenever a land enters the battlefield under our control, we are going to draw a card. Right, this is solid, repeatable card draw. At least one a turn, you know often more because we have tons of ways of just being able to play extra lands. We're going to outvalue our opponents here and just sort of run away with the game. Now, of course, we do need to go over some honorable mentions. You know, cards that didn't quite make my top 10, but are very solid. Uh, one of which isn't out yet, but it's definitely something you could look forward to, you know, once that set releases. Uh, but we're actually going to start off with an Elvish Reclaimer. Uh, so Elvish Reclaimer is a 1 cost, 1-2. One, they get plus 2, plus 2 once you have at least 3 lands in your grave, and they can pay 2 and tap to sack a land to go get any other land you want. It does come out tapped. But it is kind of a solid way of being like, hey, I want these very specific lands out of my deck and onto my field as soon as possible. This next one isn't out yet. Uh, it is going to be a part of the Redwood set, which has a name, and it's Bloomborough. There we go. Uh, but Lumra, Bellow of the Woods. So they are a six cost star star. Uh, they have Vigilance and Reach. Their power and toughness are equal to the number of lands you control. And when they enter the battlefield, you'll mill four cards and return all lands from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Uh, so Super Strong works really well with Elvis Reclaimer, uh, just because Elvis Reclaimer is going to fill your grave while you're searching for, you know, other lands. Lumra is going to come out, bring them all back. Uh, but following up our bear, we have Nadu Winged Wisdom. So Nadu feels like it's really a build around all its own. I know I've seen Commander gameplay of Nadu just really popping off like as early as turn three or four. Uh, and I'm sure with like a little bit of setup and some like fast mana rocks, it would happen even faster. 
Uh, the main reason that Nadu wasn't included in the main deck is I don't feel like we actually have enough effects that target our own creatures. Granted, our commander does target our own creatures, uh, so it might be worth, you know, including a copy. Uh, but, you know, we Nadu feels like it wants to just sort of do the I'm um, going infinite and, like, getting pure value. Following up Nadu, we have six. So six is a three cost, two four with reach. Uh, whenever it attacks, we're gonna mill three cards and we get to put a land from among them just back into our hand. And as long as it's our turn, non-land permanents in our grave have retrace. So kind of like a nice way, this all really, aside from Nadu, the first three really pair together really well. Um, I think they're gonna end up once I, you know, I pull a copy or something like that in my desert deck. Which does a lot more, hey, I want lands in the grave, sort of strats. Explorers in here, uh, so it's kind of like a weaker version of exploration. It does cost more. It only affects the one turn. It does draw you a card though. So, little, little trade-off here. Reshape the Earth is 9 mana, 3 of it green, but it does let you look for up to 10 lands and put them onto the battlefield tapped and then shuffle. So, very strong. Basically a way to instant win, uh, depending on like what kind of lands you're playing. Uh, one of which we're going to go over here in a little bit. Moving down to Artifacts, we have Conduit of Worlds, which is going to let us play lands from the grave. Again, we're not really sacrificing enough lands. But, like, if you wanted to lean in that direction, I think Conduit of Worlds, as well as the Crucible of Worlds, are both really strong for that. Lightning Greaves is just always good in Commander. It really works well if you have that Nadu. You're kind of, like, bouncing it back and forth, getting a lot of card draw, getting a lot of landfall. Omen Path Journey is one of those Vault cards from Thunder Junction. So when it enters the battlefield, you're going to look for five lands, different names, exile them. Beginning of your end step, you get to just basically cheat one out for free. It isn't random, but the five lands you're choosing are all very powerful lands. The order they come out matters, obviously, but I feel like you'll, you'll recover quick. Spelunking is going to be a nice little enchantment for three when it Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> God damn. You hear that storm a coming. Uh, but whenever it enters the battlefield, you're gonna draw a card, put a land on from your hand onto the battlefield. If it's a cave, you're gonna gain four life and lands you control into the battlefield untapped. It's really that last part that we care about. Uh, we're, we probably run a few caves. I haven't like looked thoroughly through all the lands, um, but we're really here for that last bit, which is why this common, uncommon, uncommon, is going for like $4. And then a few lands, just to touch on them, that you could add in that I feel are strong and worth considering. So, Baldur's Gate, it's very cheap to pick up. It taps for colorless, but you could also tap two and tap it to add X mana of one color, where X is the number of other gates you control. Um, you know, with the Everything Counter, and I think there are a couple gates just like in the deck by default, this is a nice like little way of ramping. Included with that is obviously Maze's End. These everything counters and a handful of gates is gonna be like a quick way of kind of just like winning the game. Fear of the Dead. Uh, probably should have just been in this deck. I get that they don't wanna like, I think it was one of the most expensive like singles lists overall because lands are expensive. Uh, but you know Feel the Dead, you love Feel the Dead. Let's let's just let us have it. And last up is Urza's Cave. So, you know, it's another Urza land, which is nice for some of the things that care about that. Taps for colorless, and you can pay three and sack it to search for any land, put it in the battlefield tapped. But yeah, 
Uh, that is the upgrade guide for Tricky Terrain. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, I think next I'll do the Termagoyf, the Goyf uh, deck. But if you did enjoy the video, please like, comment, subscribe, do all the algorithm stuff. It helps the channel to grow. Uh, if you want to talk about magic or tabletops in general or anything of that nature, there is a Discord. You can click on the link in the description to join there. And until next time, good luck with your builds. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> God damn.